Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? We're playing Banished. I'm just setting up a new map and I'm not really sure what to call it actually. Um, I'm going to call it Frithgar Town <laughs> and I'd like some suggestions in the comments uh, about what we should actually call it because Frithgar Town, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure that we should stick with that. But anyway, what I'm going to do is we're going to go for valleys. Uh, terrain size is going to be large. You could, you've got yeah, three options, small, medium, large. So we'll go for large. Uh, climate is going to be, you can have mild, fair, harsh. Harsh is difficult. That's like hard setting. Fair, medium settings. Mild is actually a lot easier to deal with. Um, it's It just makes life a little bit easier. But I think we'll go... We will go for fair on this one, and we'll go for me. No, actually, no, 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 sorry, uh, mild. Disasters are things like uh, random tornadoes, um, disease coming through, stuff like that. And it can be really difficult, it can make or break your game. We're going to go with disasters on just to see what we can do, and we'll go for medium starting conditions. Let's get going. So, um, I asked you last week, did you want me to play Banished, Spin Tires, Factorio, Craft the World, or Fortress Craft? And I was actually genuinely surprised. Now I did say last week that I've been including Banished for a while because it's been the second choice quite a few times and it went immediately to first place then it dropped pretty quickly to uh, second place and Spin Tires was the most um hang on let me just go here and pause so yeah Spin Tires was the most requested one until I went and looked at it before uh, coming to record both neck and neck both the same banished and spin tires so i've decided to go for banished because we've done several episodes of spin tires we've never played banished before so you can take a look at it now and also ba uh, spin tires mud runner is coming out in a couple of days more than a month and i'm going to be doing quite a few episodes on it when it first comes out so you'll get plenty of spin tires in the near future um, for next week, I'm not actually including Spin Tires next week. The reason is because it's coming up soon for the big release. Um, I'm not going to include it for a couple of weeks, and then I will play a little bit of extra Spin Tires and get you in the mood for it, and then the Mud Runner will come out. And yeah, so we're going to have a lot of Spin Tires coming up on the channel, so I'm not including it in the vote for next week. So your five games to choose from are Factorio. Craft the World, which is the one with the dwarfs. Um, Big Farmer, the one with the um, the medicines and everything that we played last week. Don't Starve, which is that kind of weird one that we played a few weeks ago where um, you've just got to last as long as you can on the map without dying. Um, and yeah, you, as you go through, you can last longer before you die each time. Um, it was weird, but I've, I've had quite a few tips for that one. Um, or I could do another episode of Silver, which I haven't done for quite a while. Um, I know it wasn't all that popular, but there are a few people that have requested it, so I'm including it this week. So you've got Factorio, Craft the World, Big Pharma, Don't Starve, or Silver. It's your vote, it's your game. Head in the comment section down below, let us know which one you want and why. And of course, don't forget to actually cast your vote in the top right-hand corner. Now, I would also like you to um, tell me this time make some suggestions for some games that we can play and it's I don't I'm not going to be starting a series I mean I can but this is kind of like what we do here so this is for Thursday's game this is the Thursday game the random game where we dip in and out so it's, it's got to be a sort of game where we can do an episode and then not come back to it for a few weeks and then do another episode that kind of thing um, so it's got to be in keeping with that and it's got to be family friendly so if you've got any suggestions for games that you think I might like that you think the channel might like Put them in the comment section and I'll take a look at them and maybe include them in next week's vote. Right, this game, what you've got to do is you've got to give all of your settlers here. Now we start off with a few families. You've got to give them various different orders to do different things and get them set up on their way to greatness. Now, very often a lot of people start with wooden houses and then sort of build up from there and do a load of extra things. I like to go in hard. I like to go in hard and fast on this and get um, sort of start how I'm planning to carry on. So I actually st I built stone houses right from the off. Now this is kind of unusual. Not everybody does this and there are quite a few people that think that this is a peculiar thing to do to start with. So we want to press R to rotate it round and we're going to order them to build um, one house there, one house there and I think we will go we'll go we're gonna go for six houses so I'm gonna build one there and what I'm doing is I'm trying to find the outline of the houses and where the road is so we go there and there and there so I've got six houses oops, six houses 
already um, built. Well, I've, I've ordered them to build six houses, and you can see they, they're pretty slow. They're pretty steady when you, you go set them. And we can change that in a while, but we're not going to change it just yet. So we've got various tools that show us all kinds of different overlays. I like to have this one up here at all times. It tells me how many citizens, if there's anything important going on, it's up there on the top. How many don't have homes? This tells us, uh, gives us an overview of our supplies and things like that. So we've got sort of information that we can access whenever we need it. Um, here, this is roads. Now, stone roads, they'll come later. People can go faster on them, they're useful. The stone bridge, that's actually an add-on that I've got through Steam. It's a, mo uh, a Steam mob that is available that I'm using. Um, we're not going to worry about that one now. Dirt road, that's what we want. And we want to go from there. And we want to go straight over in front of there like that. Um... You right click to get rid of it if you press Q and E it actually rotates the camera around and I really don't like rotating the camera around I like to keep the camera at the same angle while I'm playing this I can zoom in and out but I don't like moving like rotating it around at all so at the moment reserve of stone is low and that's going to be a problem because we've requested them to build six stone houses so we can get around that in a minute but before we do that we want to go to the um the settings, uh, tools and reports rather, and we want to go here to shows a log of events, not that one. Um, this one here, assign jobs to citizens. At the moment we've got 10 labourers. We need some builders to build the structures that we've got. So I'm going to assign two of these as builders. So now two of them will come along and they will start actually building some of these um, houses. Then they will be comfortable and happy in their houses. So we can get rid of that one in a minute. And we need to set up food we need to get them food as quickly as we can um so one of the things that i'd like to do early on is we, we're going to zoom out a little bit and we're going to take a look at what we've got here now i'm thinking that we could put a little area over here a hunting lodge where they could do some hunting but it's going to be a long way from there and it's a long way from home so what i'll actually do is i'm going to put a hunting lodge right here which is close to that bit there which means that they'll move the food fairly rapidly you need to kind of have hubs so that they move food rapidly and efficiently between where it's harvested and where it um, so is distributed to the various different uh, townspeople so we want to go to food production and we want a hunting cabin right there and if I rotate that round I mean that's gonna give them I'm gonna I'm gonna take it up over here so it's a little bit away from that um, storage house I'm going to put it right there like that and then right click and I go to here left click on there so that I can um, get the the road and that's the edge of the road there so the actual cabin comes up to that far so I'm going to go to there with the road and then I'm going to bring the road all the way down here now I can't actually bring road through this middle piece if you see that there it's not letting me go through it's got a, a gap in it that's not always an issue you can put the road and then you can have like a little gap and they will sort of go over that bit but it's it's not ideal and that's also going to be a problem for our little cabin so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bring this down in a straight line or mostly a straight line where can I go I want to go to that point go there and then I'm going to bring the road from that point there over it's, it won't let me go through this bit and this is the really frustrating bit here sometimes you just got to put up with this kind of stuff so we're going to put the road to there it won't go on that bit but it will go from there so if we go through here like this in theory it should allow us to do this job anyway I always put road all the way round storage facility like that there and I just moved I rotated it Right, so they are getting started on that. What the uh, any unassigned uh, villagers will act as labourers, so they will clear trees, they will clear stones, and various other items like that. Um, but at the moment, we've run out of stone and we've run out of iron as well. We got stored iron and we got stored stone and stored wood. We've run out of everything. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to go to removal and destruction tools down here, and we've got collect iron, we've got collect stone. We've got remove anything in the selected area, cut down trees, um, and then that one is remove structures. So if we go for remove anything, it will literally clear the whole lot. And we're going to do that, but we're not going to do a major um, patch of it. I'm going to do it to like this piece here. 
because that we're going to be using that to build on in the future anyway. So if I do it like that, I keep pressing the wrong. I keep going to press Q to remove my um, selected item because so many games do actually use Q as um, the option to remove your selected item. It makes it a little bit frustrating. Um, we will also include a road that goes all the way around there because it's just going to make it a bit easier to sort of get through here. Um, road just allows you people to move faster. That's what it, it, it doesn't, you don't have to have the road, it just allows them to move faster and it connects things up. What we need to do now, much more importantly, is we need to increase the speed of our simulation. You can go up to 10 times maximum. I don't like to run it, I generally run it at 5 times speed. This is what I normally do. So it's a lot faster now. Everybody's got a job. They're moving along. But running it at ten, running it at 10 times speed is great. And we I will do this for a little bit because we need them to build their houses now and get a few things going. Um, they're going to build that up there. The houses have got to come first because they were ordered first. So then I also want more food production in the shape of either past, pasture we can't do because we don't have any animals. But we could plant some field. We could plant a crop field and then they'll be able to harvest that crop field later on in the year. Now, there's a lot of discussions and arguments about what is the optimum size for a crop field. There is a maximum size that you can do, and the maximum size is um, 15 by 15. That is the maximum size crop field you're allowed to make in the game. So, I generally go for half that. I generally go for a 15. Um, well, actually, I go for a 15 by 10. I've, I've done quite a few games where I've done 15 by 10 crop fields and made a few of them like that. So I'm going to just move that back one space there. And I should be able to do 10 and then do 15 down this way. Like that. I've done quite a few with 10 by 15. There's a lot of discussion about what is the optimum because of the way that um, the amount of work that each individual person can do. Um makes a big difference to what uh, you can actually get them at like how much they can work with as they work on the field so if you assign like uh, these here i will assign two people to each field oh no i don't want to do that what i want to do is assign two people there is that assigning two people i think that's assigning two people Citizens without jobs. Yeah, well, the problem is now what i got to do is I've got to click on there and I've got to select what I'm growing. So I've got two people there assigned to the field. This one over here, I'm also going to, I'm going to assign two more. So that increases the number of farmers. And this one, we're going to plant pumpkins. So we've got pumpkins and we've got corn. And there should be two people working on each field. What I'll actually do is I'll reduce that down from three, two of three down to um, two of two, like that. So both crop fields now have access like that and and i want to go to here and i want to build a road i'm going to build 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 a road that will go in front of those two fields now i'll also make a road that will run this way around the houses that is a little bit of a distance for them to travel when they come to doing the harvest um they will plant in the field and then they will harvest and they will put the crops over there and then the people in the houses can access the crops in the barn. It's better if you can have the barn right next to the fields. To start off with, we're not going to be too fussy about that. We, we can sort of live with what we've got. These here, they've got 30 or 40 stone, 0 of 10 iron. So we're going to need iron as well as stone. A lot of iron over here. So we're going to go back to our... Um, not the collect iron, we're going to go to remove everything. And I'm going to make a patch like that that will remove all of those resources. And I will also do another little patch there like that. And that will remove some more trees. Take all of them out. Now, everybody should be working happily. And there's a way that you can find out if you've got everybody working as they should. Nothing's coming up over here at the moment. We've got 34 of 34 logs there. Uh, but we don't have any stone. So as soon as we've got the stone there, they will build that one and we will ha then have two hunters. And it looks like we've already got two hunters on there. Let me just take a look at tools and reports. And we go to here. So we've got uh, four farmers. We've got two builders. Oh, no, there's two builders that are assigned to it, I think. Um, but we're going to want... We don't want traders. We want hunters. And we're going to need a couple of those. Uh, we'll, pro we'll probably put two of them in on there. We have here, reserve of firewood is low. Now, this is going to be our next problem. 
we don't have any food. They can't. They didn't have any food from there, and we've got no food from the um, the hunting cabin either. I think that we left it running too fast for too long while we were building up this, which means so they've got houses, but they've got no food. Basically, these people are about to starve, um, and this is we've we've failed basically. Um, I can't see us getting through the winter without um, being able to do anything. So that one, what's this? Storage capacity for logs and stone and iron is near capacity. And Talonzo, the farmer, has died of starvation. And another one. Valorin has died of starvation. The um, and, and we're full. See, everything is now full. We've, we've got too much stuff everywhere. Um, I've done this completely wrong. I should have done. I should have been a little bit more careful. We can build a woodcutter. Building a woodcutter is actually really important because they. Um, I'm going to put that woodcutter down right there. Oops. Um, yeah, building the woodcutter is really important because it results in um, a. Uh, it gives them firewood. It gives them firewood, and it keeps them warm during the winter. At the moment, they're okay for firewood, but you do need to make sure that you stay on top of firewood. Um, our storage is full, so we can't actually. We, where is the stone? I don't think we've got any stone. I think that's the problem. Nine of forty stone on those houses, and zero of twelve over there. Our main problem is that we did actually. I miscalculated, and what I've done. Oop, no, I don't want to do that. I want to go collect stone there if I do that they'll now collect some more stone so they should take that stone and they should use it but everybody is everybody's getting hungry we all of our people are now getting hungry I'm still running this on a 10 times speed simulation I'm gonna keep it on 10 times just to try to keep this reasonably interesting because I got a feeling that we are going to have to um, stop uh, so what do we got died of starvation died of starvation died of starvation everybody's starving to death We've now got seven adults and three children. Um, this is it's going very badly. This this is what we this is what we call going very badly. Storage capacity is almost full. Um, I should stop that one. If I go pause on there. I should have done that to start with. Okay, this was how not to do it, and that one there is still zero of twelve stone. I'd like more stone. All of this stone here is not coming through because we don't... I think it's because we don't have the yard. We don't have the yard available. And also because we've only got seven adults. Uh, two of them are working there, two of them working there, and two of them are builders. So they're just not bringing anything along. Um, so if I now take storage, which is that one, and I go for a stockpile. And I build a stockpile right there. Hopefully that will allow us... It, we'll, we'll have someone go in there and they'll remove the items that are in there. There we go. See, they're removing that. And then the builder will come along and they'll make it right. Now they should be able to start putting the stone in there. I'm not sure if we do actually have to have a connecting road. No, we don't. They're taking the stone through. So if they're taking the stone into there, they will then build it. But we've had more people die. We've got four children and we've got five adults. So we are actually, we're, we're catching up. We're cold. Um, nothing is being built. That one is now being built. We've now got this one. It's going up. There we go. It's going up very, very fast. 82%, 83%. Okay, that one's done, almost. And so that's going to start providing us with food. Hopefully, it'll provide us with food quickly enough before anybody else dies. Uh, we've got five people here. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to go into it. Nope, there's another one's died. Um, the builder. <laughs> that's it. We, we've, we've lost. We've got three people left and three children. Well, I had an autosave, but you don't get multiple options for autosave. It's quite unforgiving, this game. If you make a mistake, if like we've done, we have made a mistake. Um, and if you make a mistake early on, it's very, very difficult. And sometimes you just got to say, you know what? It's not going to happen, so uh, we need to be moving on. I'm going to try just briefly to see if we can actually rescue this. I have been able to rescue it before. So... We haven't gone back in time very much. I've paused that one, and I'm going to pause that one as well, just to make doubly certain that it only goes to here. I want the stone to go here. It's collecting stone right there. We've just lost two people to starvation. And we've lost more people to starvation. Starvation seems to be the main theme of the day. Uh, let me just build a stockpile there. 
do another stockpile. The stockpile was quite important because we we cleared too many trees was our issue. That's what happens. Right, so we've got the stockpile. It should now allow us to move the stone that we um, put over there into the hunter's lodge. And if the hunter's lodge can be completed, we might, might just be able to bring this round. So now we've got the, we've just got to wait literally on the builders to finish. And as soon as they're done, we can then reassign some people to be... We've got one labourer and we've got two builders. As soon as that's done, that labourer is then going to become a hunter. And so is one of the two builders. That's now done. So we're going to go one hunter there. And I'm going to bring the builder total down. And I'm going to put another hunter in there. So we've got two hunters working this cabin. And hopefully they will be able to bring a little bit of food. People are getting really hungry though. And I don't know if we're going to be able to do this in time. They may be able to. We will see. Basically you just now, you, you literally got to keep an eye on them. You can watch what happens. Um, they go off into the woods. They go around hunting. And are they going to be able to bring it back in time? The hunter has died of starvation. Another hunter. <laughs> Both our hunters have just died. <laughs> oh, that's dead. I'm, I'm not laughing at the hunter's misfortune, but I am laughing at the hunter's misfortune. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm doing. Um, we now have no hunters. And we've got no food. We've got nothing. Right. We're going to restart this. And we're going to try and we're going to try to do this right. Okay. We, we are going to try to do this right. So what we want to do this time is uh, cancel. I want to go to... I want to quit. So... We're going to go back and we're going to go another new one. And we're going to, we're literally going to go all, do exactly what we did last time. We're going to go Frithgar Town. Oops. It would help if I... Capitals. Capitals. There we go. Frithgar Town. Valleys. Large. Fair climate. Uh, no, we're going to go mild climate. Just to make it a little bit easier. Disasters. We'll keep disasters off. Just to... I mean, you can still starve to death with the disasters. You just don't get disease and everything. Um, I don't think we've got time to be worrying about diseases and stuff like that. So... Um, we're going to start again, only this time we're not going to build six stone houses. A lot of people do go for a couple of timber houses because it's a lot easier to do that and you're much less likely to have everything go wrong. But like I said, I like to live life on the edge. I like to live life dangerously. I like to be dangerous. So I'm still going to do the stone houses. I, I always try to do the stone houses if I can. I really do. I, I don't know why. I like the idea of having stone houses. Um... So I'm going to build one, two, and three stone houses. I'm not going to do any more than that. I'm going to stop at three. I'm going to be restrained. I'm going to restrain myself. And I'm going to do that. And I'm going to build a road up to there. I'm then going to build a road in front of this straight over like that. And then I'm going to do my customary um, encircle this with road like that. I always do it like that. And then I want to go to here. And I want to assign jobs to citizens, which is that one there. And I want to make two builders. I always have two. Sometimes when we get really big, I'll assign a couple of extra people as builders. But I don't actually do that as a, you know very often. It's, um, it's quite low priority for me to assign more builders. Um, I, I generally find that two is enough until you get much later in the game. Now, where we are is absolutely perfect for building. We can get a trader going in here. That's, that's actually really good, right next to the river there. Um, building farms, we're going to have to sort of use some of this space to build a farm to start with. We'll, delete, we'll get rid of those later and we'll build other things there. But for now, we'll build a farm. And we're also going to want a hunting cabin, which is going to go down here somewhere. So, first off, what we're going to do is we're going to set some farms building. Before we get too far along. I'm going to move this. We're in early spring at the moment. So because it, I didn't build the farm soon enough. I should have done. That was one of my mistakes. I'm going to build two farms here. And I'm going to go 10 by 15. Like my, um, I said like I normally do. I'm going to build two 10 by 15s. I'm actually going to leave a gap there. Uh, so that I can put a road up between the fields. And off of there right now I want to assign four farmers like that so two of them will go into this field here and this field is going to have cabbage so we've got cabbages and peppers you always start with two crops this one started with cabbages and peppers so we will put what did I put in here this is cabbages so that field there is going to be peppers and we'll have two farmers working in that field as well I will make a road just a moment there 
I'm going to bring a road up here like that. So that that road there will then be building a hunter's cabin over here. So that the hunters can come and access all of this. Where there's trees and stuff, you don't tend to get much in the way of wild game around the actual building. So you want to try to keep the hunter's cabin a little bit away from everybody else, if you can. Um, it doesn't always work out, but it's a good idea to try to. So... Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to removal and we're just going to collect stone because stone is the one that we're running out of at the moment. We'll remove all the stone from that area there. We're not going to worry about the trees. We've still got plenty of trees. And I think now is the time to up the simulation speed. We're going to go to five times and I'm hoping that pretty soon this one here will become clear so that we can then uh, assign um, some more people to it. Because it's still early spring so they can still do some planting in the field. If they would hurry up and come along and just clear everything, uh, we can then get a crop planted on this field, which should be harvested in time for the first winter. That's the important part. And there we go. So we can very quickly assign... Um, I'll put that down. So there's two there. So it should be two coming into this field as soon as we've got it. Peppers. We're in spring. It's not early spring, but it should be enough that they can actually start planting and they should get some crop out of that field. So that's that one done. I'm going to slow the simulation speed down just a fraction a moment. And we're going to move over to food over here. And we're going to go to the hunting cabin. I like the hunting cabin. And I tend to use the hunting cabin a lot whenever I'm playing this game. Um, the hunting cabin is one of my priorities. I, I often have um, sort of stations where the, there is a hunting cabin. And um, I generally assign a hunting cabin with a... a a forestry area as well so they um they will build trees build trees they will plant trees and do logging and stuff like that so if we do that that'll connect the two together um basically it gives you a constant supply of wood um i don't really need to worry about that at the moment so we've got three houses there the next thing that we want is we're going to go to this one and notice the resources here uh, resource production. I'm going to go over here to the woodcutter. Now, a woodcutter does not cut down trees. Common mistake. I made it frequently when I first started playing this game. And I know a lot of other people do as well. Um, a very common mistake is to think that the woodcutter goes and cuts trees down. No, they don't. The woodcutter does not cut trees. The woodcutter turns already existing logs into um firewood and this one here we've got firewood 50 iron 10 log 82 at the moment so we do need some more there so that makes firewood um to make more trees you need you actually need uh, something different entirely you need this it's not harvest trees resource production you need to go here to a forester lodge what they do is they both plant trees and harvest trees now i normally combine these two together i put a hunter's lodge and i put the forester's lodge opposite each other on the road and a little bit away from any houses anything else and so then they can just carry on and they can do their thing so i've got one to i've ordered one to be built there and we've got the hunting cabin there this one is not got any materials yet that one up there still needs stone it's got the iron that it needs this one still needs stone so we're short of stone at the moment so what we're going to do is we're going to go over here to removal and destruction tools and we're going to collect stone, only collect stone, in the area where our forestry lodge and our hunter's cabin is. And we're going to remove all the stone from there. All of it. Every single little bit. Now, this not going. this is not a huge amount of stone was highlighted there, but if you remove the stone, it actually allows more space for more trees. And it's the trees that seem to encourage the wildlife, which is... You can see the wildlife over there. If I just go over there and take a look, there are the deer. And dear little deer, aren't they? Dear little deer. Um, we've got more deer down here as well. And they will... And there's more there in the trees. And they do... They're attracted by the trees. And I think that they actually, like, constantly regenerate or something like that. I'm not quite sure how the mechanic works. But I know that you need trees there. So we will keep the trees and we will be happy with that so let's go back to our simulation speed and increase that a little bit so we can go up to let's go up to 10 times now we've got food there and we've got a hunting cabin that is in the process of being built we've got stone that is being done as well um we've got 11 people nine people are without homes we've got two houses built um, we do need them to be in houses before winter. It's early summer at the moment, though, so we should be okay. 36 of 40 on the stone there. That should come along any moment now. We've got stone in the storage yard. 
So a little bit more. There we go. They've taken it. It was two. And that's complete. So we've got another house there being built. This house here is full. There's lots of people in that one. This one is also full. There's lots of people in that one. Um, we're going to want another house. I'm not going to build the house back up there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to build a house here. And this one house here should have enough to be able to... Um, both of these here should then be able to have um, somebody living there. And that's kind of the important bit. That's, that's the bit that we want. We just move over to there and build a road so that it connects that house properly there. Right. What happens is if you go to the tools here that we've got and we take a look at this one here. Now, if I click on the field, you can see the routes there that the farmers take. And there is the routes that farmers take. Um, at the moment, that's the builder. And then if I click over here, that's got nothing. But I've got the builder there. So they actually, they go to their houses there. And then they come over here to where the building site is. Now, by building a house over here, we just get rid of that particular mode like that and I do need to assign some hunters so let's just do that a minute actually I can just do it like this one two I generally put two in until later on when we get a um, much higher population I, I still generally stick with two um, and I'll do the same here I'll go for two there as well and if we take a look at what we've got we've now got two laborers and we've got two people assigned to everything this is our field. They're being harvested. So we've got two people working in each of these fields, a 10 by 15. And they seem to be able to harvest everything with relative ease. It's mid-autumn at the moment, not early or late. It'll say mid, uh, early autumn, autumn, late autumn. You've got to get everything done before the snow hits the ground. We've got a mild climate, so they should be okay with doing that. Um, it shouldn't be much of a problem. Um, we need a woodcutter here. Let's go to this. We've got two labourers at the moment. We only need one woodcutter, so I can assign one. I've still got a labourer. And that's those bits done. Now, if you have a look here, we've got 1,500 foods. So we've got loads of food. Cabbages, peppers. We've got some potatoes still in storage. They've got hide coats and they've got iron tools. You need all of this stuff. Tools, um, coats, firewood, all of it is really important all the way through. You've got you've to cater to everything that these people could possibly want. 3 of 40 stone. We need more stone in order to build that next house. We've got 7 people without a home. They could very well freeze to death. Now that winter is here, is every chance that those poor folks are going to freeze to death. Not ideal. We don't really want to freeze our people to death if we can help it. I'm going to get more stone from over there. And I'm going to come over this way. And there's stone down here, so I'm also going to highlight that stone. I'm going to harvest it. It's a long way that they've got to go to get that stone. But, because it's winter, the farmers aren't actually doing anything at the moment. Um, and so the farmers will come along and they will help do the labourer tasks during the winter. During the summer, they work in the fields. But during the winter, they will come and assist with any labouring tasks that are needed. We now have 12 adults, 8 children. If we build a school, which is something that we're going to do fairly soon, that is, I like to get the school in pretty quickly. You build a school... Um, you then have, they, instead of going from age 12 to become uh, labourers in the workforce, they then go to school. And you've got to wait until they turn age 18 before they join the workforce. However, because they've had an education, their performance is greatly enhanced and you get um, better results from them. They're, they're able to do more. So having giving your, um, your workers an education is a really good idea. It really does help. So we've still got three people without a home. Um, everybody else has got a home, they've got fuel, they've got everything they could possibly want. So we do need to build another house, and that other house is going to be up here. He has not got enough, um, if he's got a little symbol up there, it's basically it's saying he doesn't have enough, um, wood. It's not enough timber in that, so we want to go over to the houses now. I'm going to slow the simulation speed down a minute, just down to two. And I'm going to go to stone houses. I can't fit one in next to there. So I'm going to go back up this way. I'm going to put a line. That's my timer to say that we've run out of time already. I'm actually starting to get into this now. Now that we're actually making it work, I'm starting to get into it. So I'm going to build two more houses rather than just one. I'm going to build two. Because um, as you... Oops, I didn't mean to do that. 
As time goes on, you want your population to expand. You need your population to expand. And at the moment, every single one of these couples, you've got um, you've got adults and you've got children in the houses. Uh, you've got two hunters and a forester there and a child. And then if you look over in these houses as well, they you've also got uh, you've got a couple of children. You've got a 12-year-old farmer there, okay? They really do believe in child labor here. It's kind of like medieval times. 12 years old is plenty old enough to get out and start earning a keep. So that's what they do. Um, which means that we're going to want a schoolhouse very soon. In order to accommodate that, we've got eight children at the moment that are coming into the workforce at some point soon. Uh, we're going to need to sort of make allowances for um, future expanding population as well. So if we build two more houses, they should be then that should allow them to expand enough to cater for everything that we want them to cater for. Um, or at least at the moment. You, you can get bottlenecks. You haven't got enough people. You've got to build more houses so they've got room to expand their own population. It's quite, it's, it's quite an important aspect of the game is to maintain the population levels. If you go too hard, too fast with building new houses, though, you get a population explosion. You can't feed them. They all run out of food. And if they run out of food very early in the winter, uh, you then face some serious issues because everybody's run out of food, not just the surplus population that has suddenly turned up. And you can have, literally, they're not able to then produce their own food effectively, and you can have the entire village die out. So you get to, like, year 10. You've got your population up to 100, 120, and you make a miscalculation. You get too many new people turn up all at once, and you get everybody starving to death. You try to shut down as many different um, things as you can to so concentrate on food production. Your population, you, you literally, your, your poor people will starve to death and your population for your entire town will drop from like 120 right down to 10. It's absolutely devastating. It really is. It's heartbreaking to watch it happen. Um, all that hard work and everybody, and suddenly it's all the way down to 10 in the population. It's absolutely, genuinely devastating. Watch all of your people. You become attached to them. You really do. You, you actually become attached to them. Um, if we look here now, we've got one forester living in that house and we've got one forester living over in that house. Here, both hunters are living right there, so they're really close by. So what they'll do is they will go home to eat and stuff like that, and then they will go to work. And the only time that they've got to leave this area right here is when they've got to go from their house to go and get supplies. So at the moment, they've got to go to that storage. They've also got to take the um, supplies from there over to storage. So it's kind of balanced at the moment because... Um, they don't have that far to go and what we do later on is we build um, hubs for them and what the hubs do is if I go to it's that one there we build a market and everything is taken to the market and then the houses go to the market so you build um, you build the houses very close to the market and everything else the market they go to the various different storage areas in the map and they collect everything up and they put it in the marketplace and then the people in the houses they've only got to go to the marketplace and it basically increases your efficiency uh, astronomically as you get you get masses more efficiency it really works really really well so we've got 19 and 40 stone there at the moment we've got four stone in here um our new house means that now we have everybody has a home to live in so we've got another house being built at the same time and this is an excellent time to start building a school. It's also, unfortunately, going to be a good time for me to have to stop. I'm not going to be able to continue on any longer. Um, before I do, though, there is one more thing that we want to do. We need to build a bridge across here so that we can start accessing some of the stone up there. That's going to be later. What I want to do first is I actually want to go to... I mean, if you look here at the stone... I've got more stone over here, and that's something that we're going to have to access. I think we're going to have to do it like that, so that we've got the stone to um, build what we need to. We've got iron being collected out of that area. Uh, you probably notice occasionally trees flickering. Um, they fall down by themselves. They literally, they, they fall of their own accord. Um, the forest is a living and breathing entity. The trees will sprout. You get little young trees, they sprout up. And they grow. See, that's not been planted by us. That has grown naturally. And that will grow all the way up to an old tree, fall over, and die. And that will be the end of it. So you have a full life cycle on the map. And it's something that's really cool. Um, but yeah, what was I saying? I wanted to build a quarry. Now, a quarry is a big entity. This is a big thing. And I did have a mod that... Normally, when you build a quarry, it makes a great big... Oh, yeah, the mod. This allows me to place this on a mountain. You can't normally do that. You've normally got to place it on flat ground. It digs a great big hole in the ground. 
and you can't use it afterwards. I have a mod that allows you to quarry a mountain and it turns it into flat level ground. Um, I've done this quite deliberately because I don't like the idea of wasting all the land that is available. So that is why I've gotten this particular mod. I love this mod. It's absolutely brilliant. It's so useful. Um, if I just bring that forward there. I'll turn that into a quarry like that. And I'll build a road in front of it. Down there like that. If I can find the edge of the quarry. I think it's there like that. And I'll build this road right over to there. And I'll build another road straight down that way as well. So that i got road accessing sort of all of the front area of the quarry, which will make life a little bit easier for us. Actually, I think it goes over a bit further than that, so I didn't need that particular road right there. Um, there is a way to remove roads. There, remove road in the selected area. So I can go and remove the road like that. And then I can go here and I can redo the road. And I can put it down there where I wanted it to be off the end. That will allow me a little bit of space there if I want it. Working in a quarry is quite a dangerous job, so when your people do actually go to start work in the quarry, um, it can be quite hazardous for them, unfortunately for them. Um, you, can, you can get quite a few deaths being caused by the quarry. At the moment, we've got a lot of labourers. We've now got 18 people, number of adults, students and children. We've got 18 adults, 4 children. We take a look at our numbers here. We've got seven laborers. So we've got plenty of laborers. Hunters and woodcutters and all the rest of the foresters there. We're going to need stone cutters now. So we're going to want... I'm going to start off with three stone cutters. That's... Stone cutters are fairly slow. They are fairly slow to produce. Um, I do end up with quite a lot of people working in the quarry in the end. Uh, we've got 52 logs there. That's going to need to come up. But anyway, we are now going to have to go. Um, after the quarry is complete, we will then start work on building a schoolhouse, but we'll have to do that next time. If you enjoyed this episode, then please head down below and give me a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. My question for this week is, well, obviously, which game do you want me to play next week? Your options for this week are going to be Factorio, uh, Craft the World, which is the one with the dwarfs, uh, Big Pharma, which is the, um, the one where we make the medicines and stuff, don't Starve or Silver. I'll play another episode of Silver. That's, it's been quite a while since i played an episode of that. But anyway, those are your five options. Um, it's your vote. It's your game. Head in the comment section down below. Let us know which one you want and why. And of course, don't forget to actually cast your vote in the top right-hand corner. Um, and that's it. We'll, I'm, I'm going to have to come back to this next time, I think. So I'm going to slow the stimulation speed down to two times so that it doesn't sort of go blasting on ahead without you and if you liked this episode then obviously i will give you the chance to watch another one in a week or two's time and um, we can make some more progress with it so until next time thank you very much for watching this is frithgar goodbye and see you later